Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days. Then we're continuing REST API testing with Postman. Today we're going to look at HTTP status, header, body, and overall, going to take a look at our request and response for the API somewhere in the browser. In the dev tools, we can go to networking and see the whole thing happening. Okay. So HTTP status. HTTP response status codes indicate whether a specific HTTP request has been successfully completed or not. We will take a look at all different HTTP statuses in developer.mozilla.org, but uh, generally speaking, you're going to only be using a few of them, right? So, for example, uh, within the 100s, you have informational status codes, and you're not going to see those a lot. Uh, there is a status code response 100 that means continue and that means the server has received the request headers and the client should proceed and send the request body so the whole other remaining part of the request right then there are like 200 codes and 200 means it's some sort of success for example if you're doing a get request you will get back 200 okay meaning that you know the request was successful and you're getting data back based on that request um so the server is giving you response but if you're doing a post request and you actually add a new user or a new resource you will get 201 back and that means something was created the resource was created right so the request was successful and a new resource has been added now there are 300 uh codes for example uh, redirection 301 means something was moved permanently so the requested resource has been permanently moved to a new url uh, 302 means it was found but the requested resource has been temporarily moved to a different url you're not going to see those a lot but then there are 400s and then when you get 400 it's probably pretty often happening like even for a regular user you'll see like 404 once in, once in a while right so 400 errors are client error responses if you get 401 back that means you're unauthorized so authentication is required to access the resource if you get 404 that means it wasn't found the server can't find the requested resource then there are 500 server error responses and those come from the back end not from your client not from your browser but actual back end experiencing some uh, error right for example 500 internal server error the server encountered an unexpected condition that prevented it from fulfilling the request or you get 503 service unavailable the server is not ready to handle the request often due to being overloaded or down for maintenance so typically speaking 500 errors are worse than 400 errors because they come from the server something is happening on the back end and instead of gracefully processing the requests something is actually crashing it or there's a, a response that it can can't send successfully and you get a 500 coming from the back end you might have a stack or some code showing some error that user typically doesn't need to see it shouldn't be going all the way to the client it shouldn't be going all the way uh, to the ui you should have like a nice 400 in front of it uh, 500 error was processed and you'll get a nice 400 saying you know something went wrong instead of uh, showing the user a whole trace of blown up code on the back end coming with the 500 error response right okay uh, so then you have http headers and http headers are key value pairs sent in the request and response between the client and the server and the header provides uh, meta information essentially it's data that provides context or additional details about the primary data being transmitted and we will look some at, at some of the headers uh, at developer.mozilla.org but common http headers like you will see content type so content type application json for example and this header tells the client or server what type of content is being sent in the body of the message in this case it indicates that the body contains json data or you will see authorization and uh, for example you see authorization and then you'll see bear in some really long value that will be like a token and this header carries credentials for authentication the client to the server uh, where browser might use it when you authenticate once and it remembers and stores your token right your session uh, and next time you don't have to actually log in you don't have to provide a login and password when using the same browser going back to the same page you will be automatically log in because the server will accept this token coming from the client and kind of automatically 
letting you in, authenticating you. And then you get HTTP body. So the HTTP body refers specifically to the part of the HTTP request or response that contains the actual data being transmitted between the client and the server. The body is everything that comes after the headers in the HTTP message. In the request body, uh, you might see data like submission, form submissions, JSON objects, or files that the client is sending to the server. And then in the response body, uh, you can see data that the server is sending back to the client, including HTML content, JSON data, or file, right? You might also hear term payload, and HTTP body and payload are often used interchangeably, but payload generally refers to the data that is carried within the HTTP body. Uh, we will be working with requests and responses that use JSON to transfer data in payload. And JSON is formatted in key value pairs where a key is a string or means text value, you will see it in quotes. And value itself can be different data type. So here's an example, we have ID one, username alex usa day so let's say that's the payload response coming from my user uh, request and id in quotes it's the key it's uh text right because it's in quotation but you get one without the value it was out quotes and the data type here is integer but then you have key username and the value alex usa days and both of them are in quotations meaning both of them are text values Okay, and the whole JSON, you can see it, it is enclosed in the curly braces here. Now let's go ahead and see some of that in action in the actual DevTools console. Okay, so here we are at developer.mozilla.org and it has tons of information on HTTP, uh, on JavaScript. There's it's like a library of knowledge, right? So feel free to to use this as a document that you can reference to, to look things up. So let's say we're gonna be looking at HTTP status code, right? So here we are, HTTP response status codes. And here we have informational responses. So those are from 100 to 199. Successful responses from 200 to 299. Redirection messages, 300 to 399. Client air responses, from 400 to 499. Server error responses, again, from 500 to 599. Now, if you get deeper into that, you will see there's only a few that are actually used. A lot of them are not used. So for like informational responses, you have a 100, 101, 102, 103. For successful, you have 200 okay, 201 created, 202 accepted, and so on and so on and so on, right? For example, if you deleted something, there's 204 no content, so successful deletion saying there's no more content existing. Uh, there's some redirection and client air responses. So redirection is 300, client air responses are 400, like for example, 404 note found, and uh, there are 500 that are server side. Now, typically, when working with API and testing, you will see, most of the time, you will see 200, so you'll have to validate the successful ones, and then you will only see a few, so like 200 or 201 or 204 on deletion. Uh, you will see only a few with the 400 responses and only a few with 500. You will rarely see one, 100s and 300s because those are less often uh, used. Okay, so that is in the responses let's now let's take a look at the headers right http headers and now in the header so we talked about the request headers response headers so there's like author authentication header and we talk about authorization right authorization contains the credentials to authenticate to um, a user agent with a server there are caching proxy authorization a conditional so there there are so many different headers a large amount of headers like but you don't have to remember all of them so if there's anything that you start working with and you're not sure okay what is this header why do i need to test it what is this response you can always talk to your team members you can always talk with developers but most importantly you can always go to developermozilla.org and start searching and find something and read about it now let's go into the request and response and uh, let's go into inspect. 
and let's go into the network tab okay so i want to see the whole thing in action for example if i'll click on a certain request here this request will get sent out uh, so let's say i'm trying to get a single user uh, let me just clear everything out so get a single user and here is my request you can see there's an api call going to this endpoint https um, rec recres.in api users2 right and it is a get request so this is a method you get response status code 200 okay so that means it was successfully processed uh, you have ip address you have reference policy so not really something that you know you're probably going to be looking into unless specifically testing for that but yeah you will verify the method you will verify the link you will verify the response that the proper response is coming back and then we have uh response headers here and it gives all sort of different information in the response header you might look into some of it if it is needed by your testing but it's not going to be very often and then you have a request header provisional headers are shown disable cache to see full header so a lot of the stuff that i've been already sending out it's cached so it's only showing some of the headers here but we can still see for example content type header and we know it's application json so in json format we will get the response back now if i'm going to go into the body right so um, here is the response the whole thing and if i'll go into the preview i will see it a little bit more organized uh, this is the, this whole thing is a payload, a JSON response, and there are like data here and support. And within data, I have a bunch of key value pairs. Like ID is two, email is this email for the user. First name is Janet, last name of Weaver, the avatar image. So when you will be testing API, that's exactly what you will be doing. You will be sending a request using a tool. Uh, to a specific URL, API URL, that is expecting certain information, and then you will get back a status code and a payload that you will be going into and verifying on the, of the all the values that are coming back into that payload, making sure that the correct user comes back, that there's actual response, status code is correct, maybe you will be looking at some of the headers, that the headers what you expect them to be, and so on. So this was a, a GET request, right? Um, now let's do, let's say post, right? If I'll click on this post request, we will see the post request happening. So here we get the response in the UI, but we also can take a look at the post request right here. Again, in the, the body, in the console, in DevTools, in networking tab. Uh, again, we have headers. They go into this particular URL. It's post method. We got 201 back, meaning that it was successfully created. Uh, we have some response headers. We have some request headers here. Uh, you can see in the request headers, they're mentioning like post here, the past. Um, again, we have content type application JSON. Now it even has a cookie here, the origin of the request and so on and so on. User agent, uh, kind of browser supported here. And in the payload, I can see the response. So I created... Uh, in the payload, I can see the request payload. So this is what I'm sending with my post. I'm, I'm telling the backend to create a user with name Morpheus and with job leader. And then I can get a preview of the response. So there's a response and the preview of the response. Uh, and within the response, I get a JSON payload coming back or response body saying that, okay, name Morpheus is created, job leader is created it was uh the id was assigned to that user 354 and uh, it was created at a certain date and time right what if i'll try to hit try to reach a link that does not exist right so let's say we're gonna add something does not exist i'm just typing out url that is not there does not exist okay here's a 404 uh resource no content unknown can we have all here we have all in in all is like a default response does not exist uh so this url is really not there i just typed it out i made it up and when i try to reach for it 
I got a 404 error. So I used get method to reach to this URL. Uh, this is the URL I came up with. It doesn't exist on the, on the server. And as a response, I got 404 not found. I guess this is a default response preview if you hit like 404. Um, there's response in actual HTML. So there's this is your whole HTML document. So it's not like a payload was in the JSON now. It just gives you the whole page 404 here showing uh, the top header with information and then actual small 404 at the bottom. Go to the Google and clear it out and say contact underscore us, for example. Run it. Yep. Was not found. 404, that's an error. The request of the URL contact asked was not found on uh, this server. That's all we know. And here's an actual 404 was the preview that they're sending out and not found. So when you will be testing API and working in Postman, you will be working against API documentation that will show you what links are available to reach, what kind of data type you will get in response, what kind of payload you can send and what you can expect uh, from your payload as a response. So you will be verifying multiple things. You will be verifying that links are there, the URLs are there. You can actually send API requests. You'll get responses. Those responses will contain certain data and that certain data is valid and the status code are uh, correct and so on and so on. So this is in essence what we will be doing uh, going forward. Okay, this was Alex USA Days. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.